Which one is it? This one. Ha! There we go. Oh no! Oh, there's a gap. Yeah, there we go. Welcome, one and everyone, to this week's episode of Scotch and Smoke Rings. I, of course, am your neighborhood friendly Oxhorn here, as always, with my suspender set to maximum stun. We've got a great show for you today, if indeed the show is going on. Can you all see me? Yes, you're in the chat. Episode 344 of Scotch and Smoke Rings. Good to see each and every one of you. Madman Max says 30 seconds late, 60 seconds late. No, sir. I pushed the button on time. It's just my computer was lagging is all. It's, yeah, it's, it's happened. But the button was pushed on time. It says broadcast and I clicked it at 7 o'clock. The Bancy Fadger says evening Oxhorn. Evening to you good sir. Over 17 says hello, hello. Andy the DK says hail, hail sir Oxhorn. Hail, hail back at ya. Everybody's here today. Cigar Ox, pleasure to have you in the show today. He says, uh... Welcome to episode 344, a Red Snappa production. Please leave your tray in the upright position. Void were prohibited. It must be of legal age. No purchase necessary uh, needed. I must pay taxes on all contest winnings and have a good time. If indeed life were that complicated for me, I would not have a show. <laughs> Today I am drinking some new Belgian... Rooster. Triple. Triple. It has a rooster on it. But it's called Tripel. Or Triple. I don't even know. But I'm drinking it because I just finished my dinner. Which was a lovely bowl of cheesy pasta. Which my loving wife made for me. And I had some monkey shoulder ready for tonight. And I might get to some of this later. Depending on how well I nurse this beer. But for the moment, we are just sipping on some Belgian beer. Which is its own reward, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, let me turn that down a bit. So that I can actually hear myself think. There we go. Oh, interesting. Nightbot is compiling statistics about the Scotch and Smoke Rings chat. <laughs> Here are the, ch the top chatters from the last program. Are you ready? The top chatters. Number one is Madman Max. Madman Max, you were the top chatter. Coming in second place, which is half of what Madman Max said last week, is Mr. Tumnus from last week. Then Greg Hartung, then Imagine Justin, then the Bansy Fadger. It only gives me the top five. But there you go. Those are the top chatters from last week. I don't know what they mean by chatter. Is it the size of your paragraphs? How frequently you post messages? Or the sheer number of messages that you posted? I'm not sure. But those are the analytics. And it's pretty fun to take a look at that. Um, is, is Nightbot even in no 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 I don't want you to leave join the channel Nightbot okay you're in the channel Nightbot is in the channel great Calendrill says, uh, is it bad that I enjoy the Red Army Choir? No, I've actually been really fond of the um, the old Soviet all-male choir from back in the day. And that actually came from my love of The Hunt for Red October. I watched The Hunt for Red October. I know it was a book, but I watched the movie with Sean Connery back in the day. My dad loved it. You know, it was the Cold War. This was the late 80s. And so The Hunt for Red Up October comes out and my dad had us watch it. It was a good movie, and we got the soundtrack. And on the soundtrack was all of this amazing Soviet all-male chorus singing. And I was blown away as a kid. I remember being blown away as a kid. It was amazing. So I got the soundtrack to The Hunt for Red October, and I've been um, trying to find different songs and acts that are in the similar style 
ever since because it's really amazing. So no, it is not bad for you to enjoy music, even if it is performed by enemies. <laughs> you can still enjoy the music, right? <clears throat> Coffee Ninja says, I have not seen you in a long time. Coffee Ninja, it's a pleasure to have you back on the program. Good to have you here, even if it has been too, uh, too long. Too long. Madman Max says, Oxhorn, can I make a smoke ship this week? Or do I not have one this week? Uh, sadly, I don't have a cigar, so no smoke ship this week. But maybe next week. Spidey2721 subscribed for three months in a row. Spidey2721, you are a rock star. Thank you so much, good sir. <laughs> Greg Hartung says, if you love male choir music, you'll enjoy Skyrim's soundtrack as well. I, even though I've never played Skyrim, I do actually listen to the Skyrim soundtrack on Pandora. And not of my own choosing. I've got a variety of different playlists that I've got set up on Pandora. And then Pandora just chooses songs they think I'll like. And they chose the Skyrim music. And I like it. It's good. They're right. Their machine knows me. Robin2258 says, no smoke show. No smoke show today, sadly. But hello, pleasure to have you on the program. We have everything we need. We have fire, cigar cutters, my mouth, but sadly no cigar. Cigar Ox says, have you seen Star Wars 7 yet? No, I still haven't seen it. I know, I have completely missed the zeitgeist. <clears throat> I have yet to see it. Someday. Someday. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, quick announcement before we move on to the rest of the program. So my wife is trying to get rid of some old baby furniture that we've had in the house for years now. We got it back when Gavin was a small boy. And it's now just taking up space because he's grown up a bit and he no longer uses it. So she went on to Craigslist today and listed them as inventory pieces to give away and we got a number of hits but there was this one couple that said hey we're gonna come by tonight and pick it up and my wife's like great my husband is busy at seven but please come beforehand and they said sure so we're expecting them an hour ago and um they don't show up and then my mom my my wife gets this text saying hey we're stuck in rush hour traffic we're gonna be there at 7 30. So then Jody comes down and says, uh, I can't help them. So in the middle of your program, I need you to stop the show and open the garage door, which is right there, and help lift the furniture into their car. Because the furniture is sitting right here. It's a little blue bookshelf and a little wooden toy tool table. And they're heavy items, and we moved them down here because we were expecting them earlier, but they didn't come, and so they're going to be arriving right in the middle of my show. So, just so you know, in about 20 minutes, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna have to pause the show, and uh, you're gonna be hearing dead air for a good five minutes while I help these people with their new furniture. Or who knows, maybe I'll leave the microphone on and you can hear me negotiate with perfect strangers in my own home. Madman Max says, can we still watch you move them? That would be fun. <laughs> no, I, I'm probably not going to be recording Perfect Strangers. Uh, I'm probably not going to be recording Perfect Strangers on my stream. Uh, number one, it's not polite because they don't know they're on camera. <laughs> and number two, I have no control over what they're going to do or say. So maybe I'll leave the microphone on. Maybe I'll do that. Greg Hardline says, are you sure they're not crazy people? Far too many crimes have stemmed from that site. Well, if I am murdered, you'll see it happen live on camera. Hey, and that's good television, right? Now, I use Craigslist all the time. I sell furniture on Craigslist. I pick up furniture on Craigslist. It's a great place to get quality furniture because furniture stores overcharge. What they do is they buy sawdust from lumber mills. They mix it with glue and they press it 
into boards and pieces of furniture. And then they try to sell it for the same price as something that has been handcrafted out of actual solid sheets of wood. Sheets. Planks. Planks of wood. Sheets. Uh, so, anyway, it's really hard to get actual wooden furniture these days, and so I always go to Craigslist because usually you've got somebody who doesn't know what they have who are, who's trying to get rid of something because they think it's too old. Oh, this piece that I inherited from my grandma is too old, but it's made from actual wood, and it was made in the 20s and using actual dowels, and it's great. Sheet is correct, says Spidey. Is it a sheet? A sheet of wood? I was, it's like a sheet of sheet metal, right? Sheet metal? Sheet wood? Goldbreath says, what if it's hippie former neighbor Tom? If it's hippie neighbor Tom, I'll actually bring him on camera because you all deserve to see him. After uh, after the myth that, that the, the mythology that has erupted around him. <laughs> after the mythology that has erupted around him, he deserves some camera time. <laughs> Imagine Justin says, ugly rams, silly horses, and riding cats are ground into glue. That is a quote from my song, The Great Kodo, indeed. That's what they do. That's what they use horses for. They take horses and they grind them into glue. When a horse is past its prime, we learn this from Animal, animal Farm, when it can no longer lift weights, it gets taken off to the glue factory. Like the loyal comrade that it was. <laughs> the Bancy Fadger says, uh, I always pictured Hippie Tom as a night elf that bothers Oxhorn in real life. That was my life for a good many years. I had my own hippie night elf living right next door to me. It was pretty great. Mr. Tumnus says, I have a table that my grandfather had made. And my grandmother ended up painting it black one day because she was bored at home. It's still dark in color to this day. Painted a handcrafted table black? You could sand that out probably. You know, if it was made from wood, just put it out in your in your garage or in your driveway. Get a, a belt sander and sand all that paint off. Then you'll be able to refinish it and it should look really nice. <laughs> Spidey2721 says, I tried Craigslisting, uh, I tried going to Craigslist for turntables, but no luck. People seem to know what they have with old quality tables. Well, a cotton industry has, has, has cropped up of people who spend their days scouring Craigslist for little gems, and um, they're ready and, and waiting to hop in their van and go pick it up. If they find something that's valuable, that people are listing for cheap as free, if not free. So it's really hard. You know, you kind of have to be quick. When I want something, right? All right just I'll, I'll share with you my my game plan. When I want something very specific, oh, he's getting it. He's getting it refinished this summer. That's great. Well, good for you. I hope it works out well. When I want something very specific, I'll go on to Craigslist and I'll open up a variety of tabs in my Chrome browser, and I'll have a bunch of searches up that I'll hit every 30 minutes throughout my work day. Uh, searching for the free item, searching for the paid item under $20 or whatever, has to have images, and then I'll leave that up for, you know, sometimes a week until what I want pops up. Uh, but when it does, I see it first because I've got all my tabs set, set up. And then I just call them up, say, hey, I'm on my way to get it. Please hold it for me. And I tend to get it. I got a nice 100% leather pristine lounge chair that way. And I got a nice side table slash magazine rack that way. A couple other things. For cheap, like $10. Imagine Justin says, I think I had too much bacon tonight. Wait, what am I even saying? Everyone loves bacon, including me. Cheers to good bacon and good life. Cheers to you, good sir. There's no such thing as too much bacon until you have a heart attack. Then, of course, you've had too much bacon. That, I think, is the barometer. Cheers. <laughs> uh, 
All right, let us show off some fan art. Oh, another thing, I've got a new game. Well, I don't know if I have a new game or not, but I got a new video card, as you all know, last week. I, I was telling you a little bit about it, <laughs> and I'm, I still haven't figured out all of the new quirks that my machine is experiencing due to this video card. For example, I still can't show you my screen. It gets all weird and garbly, so uh, sadly I won't be able to show off fan art this week, but I can read it. You may not get the image, but I can read it. Anyway, um, so I got this new video card, and then I got an email from AMD saying, Hey, uh, by the way, when you purchase this video card, you got a, a free copy of our new Hitman game that's coming out. And that's, you know, that's a game about a professional assassin. It's not something I would have ever bought on my own. But it's free. So I downloaded it on Steam, and I'm in the beta, and I haven't played it yet. I haven't even opened it. It just finished installing 30 minutes ago. So who knows? If there's enough user interest, I may stream some Hitman either today or, to, or next week or something like that. Problem is, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know if it's going to be crass. I know. I mean, I, it is going to have murder. Yeah, murder. Well. Snapping necks, things like that. But I don't know what else it's going to have. So it is a mature game. So I think I may play it for a few hours first before I decide whether or not it's suitable for live streaming. With this show, anyway. Robin says, a new NVIDIA card? No, it's an AMD card. I actually started with an NVIDIA card, and it garbled up my system. I installed it perfectly, and I couldn't get it to work on any monitor. I would plug it in, turn on my machine, black screen. So I returned it and got an AMD instead. The Bansy Fadger says, Back in the day, I recall you playing Team Fortress 2 on the show. Would you consider doing it again in the future? Maybe I did enjoy Team Fortress 2 back in the day. And by back in the day, I mean like 2008. That's how far back your memory is going. Because that's when I was playing Team Fortress 2, back when I worked at Wii Game. 2008, 2009, I worked at Wii Game. We played Team Fortress 2 a lot together as part of our community outreach, and I enjoyed playing with all the fans, and that's really the last time I played uh, Team Fortress 2, but it was a good game, and I enjoyed it a lot. Over 17 says, you murder mutants and bandits in Fallout. What's the difference? There's a huge difference. There's a world of difference, and it hinges on the word murder, and this is something that's actually really sick with our society, because we kind of conflate the words kill and the words murder. And this tends to happen with hippies. Hippies do this a lot. Meat is murder! No, meat is killing. Yes, you have to kill the tiny baby duck and strip off all of its downy little feathers before you can dunk it in a bread coating, pop it in the microwave, and have a tasty little duck nugget. Yes, you have to kill the duck. But murder is a uniquely human concept. Humans can't murder animals. Humans can kill animals. Humans can unjustly kill animals. Humans can destroy uh, uh, another person's property that might be in the form of an animal, but humans can't murder animals. Murder is uniquely human. So, when you mention super mutants and raiders, here's the major difference. In Hitman, in Hitman, I'm walking up to uh, some waiter in a, at a yacht who works at a yacht and he's just waiting tables and I come up behind him and I snap his neck. That's murder, right? But in Fallout 4, I walk into a town and a horde of super mutants start shooting at me and a horde of raiders start shooting at me. I have two choices, die or shoot back. So there's a distinct difference. On one hand, you're murdering someone and that's not nice. On the other hand, you're defending yourself from murderers, and that's killing, but it's not murder. A distinct yet important difference. All right, the philosophy part of the program is over today, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to list our drinks and have a cheerful cheers. Cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Overwatch is going to trump Team Fortress 2. Sorry, kitties. That is a game worth streaming. 
I haven't played Overwatch yet. I probably should. I hear it's good. Imagine just Day, uh, ju Imagine Justin says, "I think you mean we got me, we got me." Yeah, that was, that was fun. <laughs> Inside gem. Well, many of you know it. It was from my old Wii game days. Imagine Justin says, I heard that sometimes people eat duck tongue. They must really quack a lot. There are a variety of diverse cultures on this planet that eat all sorts of things. And there is no judgment. I, however, will probably not ever eat duck tongue. Nor will I have cow cheese. Is that what it's called? Brain? Cow brain? What's it called? Brain cheese? Something cheese? It's really not cheese. It's just brain. But they use the word cheese in it somewhere. I don't know. <sighs> the X Metal Earth says Oxhorn drinking from the bottle. Yes, but, but, this is a craft beer. This is a bottle of scotch. Two different things, right? They're different. They, they have, they come with different conveyors of the fluid inside. This is designed for sitting on your shelf and pouring out small drams. You don't, they don't make this bottle with the expectation that you're going to sit there and chug it on down, which is why next to this bottle I have this, the cup that is used to accompany it because you have an ounce at a time. You enjoy it. But this, far less alcoholic, it comes in a single serving portion. It is designed to be consumed as it is in one little capsule. <clears throat> and so it's far less um, hoboish to drink a, a craft gentlemanly beer uh, out of a bottle. That said, if I did have a pint glass handy, I would pour myself a pint, but I don't, so. Bottoms up. <laughs> head cheese, yes, hog head cheese, is that what it's called? Head cheese, okay. Well, it shows how much of a bohemian food connoisseur I am. They probably love that stuff. Robin2258 says you can get mad cow disease from the brains. I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I, I, I would not be surprised. If there was ever a part of the cow body where you could catch mad cow disease, it would be the brains. Uh, I'll, I'll steer clear of the brains. I'll, I'll just have a nice piece of other cow, other part of cow. Just not the brains. Or anything that dangles. Nothing that dangles. <laughs> All right. Uh, now that we've gone there, let's talk a little bit about your fan art. So on the Facebook page today, let me refresh it just to make sure that we see everybody. And of course, here we go from Imagine Justin. I know that it's hard for you to appreciate the photos without seeing them, but let me describe it to you. Here we have a photo from Imagine Justin, and it says, Bacon Fajita Tacos. Just waiting for the show tonight. Who is hungry? Wait, where's the sour cream? And he's got three tortillas laid out. They're here? All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. That it's time for me to entertain some strangers with with some free furniture. So hang tight. It's it, it's going to get loud. We're going to open the garage door. Hang tight. All right, here we go. So here's the first one. 
Uh, this is the blue children's table. Yeah. And we've got this little workstation. There's some little tools and stuff. That's cool. You know, with it, yeah. It's a little tool carrier. Yeah, so so it's, it's, not like, it's not like one of those plastic ones you see. You know, that's a yeah. it's wood. Yeah, it is made of wood, so. Here, let me help you out. I'll get this one. Yeah, sure. Well, I hope traffic wasn't too bad for you guys. Nice couple. All right, there you go. Sir Chaos says, uh, you should put up a, a BRB screen, yeah. If only I were organized on this program. <laughs> Blacktoof says he should have turned the camera so we could see what's going on. I'm very glad I didn't, and here's why. It was a husband and wife couple, and the wife was in a full suit of sweat clothes. I mean, yes, I realize that life is tough. And sometimes you don't have time to put on appropriate adult clothing. But when it's 7.30 at night and it had just been raining and you're going out in the middle of the night to meet perfect strangers, I mean, who am I to judge, man? I'm just, I'm just getting cantankerous in my old age. Getting cantankerous, that's what's going on. But I'm not going to be streaming such blasphemies on Scotch and Smoke Rings. Sure. <laughs> and then shad uh, 79 says is that a paper shredder no that's just my really really loud garage door <laughs> the bancy factor says well played oh seattle yeah indeed oh seattle where were we there we go all right so i was describing this wonderful image for you three tortillas covered in what appears to be chunks of cooked pork that are then covered in shredded cheddar cheese. And then on top, we find two strips of delicious bacon piled on top. Those are Madge and Justin's fajitas tonight. I must say, I am envious. Good on you, sir. Jonathan posts a Darth Vader meme that says, I find your lack of bacon disturbing. Well, Darth Vader, we won't want to miss you, uh, to disappoint you. Everybody eat bacon for Darth Vader. Richard Mago says, uh, I don't know how I feel about this whole female cast thing for the new Ghostbusters movie. Yeah, that's right. They released the trailer for Ghostbusters. Look, I hope it does well. Yeah, I hope it does well. I, I don't wish anybody failure. I shall re reserve my judgment. Who knows what will happen. Matt Ezel shares with us an, an image, and it says, How to make the perfect BLT. B stands for bacon. On top of it, pile L, which is a little more bacon. And then third, top it, T with more bacon. BLT. It's very clever. I enjoyed it. Thank you. By the way, the image they used in that, I know the restaurant. There's there's a chain of restaurants that stacks their bacon just like that right up here in Seattle. It's called Red Mill, Red Mill Burgers. Great burgers. All right, so... Uh, so you know that actor who was in Forrest Gump, who played Lieutenant Dan? 
He's also, uh, he plays Detective Mac Taylor in CSI New York. Well, there's a meme that Matt Ezel posted, and it says, this guy's the definition of classiness, and it's got his fi face. And it says, plays a disabled veteran, uses his fame and fortune to support disabled vets. I have to admit, I've always, and I, I feel ashamed that I don't even remember his name, the name of the actor, but I've always really admired him. When I've seen him pop up in the news and I see what he's been working on, and I heard that he's been using a lot of his his notoriety to support veterans' issues, and I've always really admired that, so good on him. Gary Sinise, yes, Gary Sinise, that's his name. Thank you, thank you, Robin. And Blagtuff, and Sir Chaos, I know. Just meant mind blank there. Gary Sinise is his name. Greg Hartling says, I saw Red Mill on Man vs. Vood. It's a shame I didn't try that when I was in Seattle. I got really lucky. When I got my job at Boutique back in like 2011, when the company was just starting, our old office, which was rat infested, by the way, but that's a story for another day, was right next to, to uh, Red Mill Burgers in um, um, Wallingford. Was it Wallingford? Green, Greenwood? In Greenwood. And we would go there every week. Multiple times a week. Two or three times. You know, it was just seven employees or, or so at the beginning. And we would all pack up, go to, to Red Mill Burgers. And every, every time I walked in, I would see that stack. That cubed stack of bacon in the back. And they would be dishing out all this wonderful bacon goodness. And I'm sitting there going, this was a good job. I'm glad I took this job. <laughs> Matt Ezel is really on a roll. He shares with us another one. Diet Coke with bacon flavor. Ooh. Oh, dear. You know, I was on Reddit today. I know. And I saw a tweet from Donald Trump. And we're not going to get into Donald Trump. I just don't have the energy. But the tweet itself was funny. And the tweet said, You know, I've never seen a thin person drinking Diet Coke. Ah ha ha, okay, fat joke, ha <laughs> ha. But you know, it's got some truth to it. Diet, the diet in Diet Coke is very misleading. Yes, there are fewer calories, but it's still not good for you. And I know I like Diet Coke. I do. It's good. I have to admit, the thought of adding bacon flavor to Diet Coke just turns my stomach. And it's because of that image that I think I could steer clear of Diet Coke for quite some time. Andy the DK says, Rat infested office? Sounds like you have a topic for a Madman Max segment. Uh, come on, tell us the story, Ox. <laughs> says Madman Max. It's, it's not a big story, but... All right, we had, we had this office. And this was when our company was first starting out. So for those who don't know... I was hired by a company called Boutique back in 2011, and uh, I got the job on Craigslist. Ended up being one of the best professional des decisions of my life. Had that job for a good four years. It became a multi-million dollar company and was sold to Priceline. So it was a it was a good a good time. But um, when we first started, I was the very first uh, person hired in the Seattle office. They already had an office in Santiago, Chile, at the time. But they were just starting an office in Seattle because that's where the founders and the co-founders all lived. And uh, I was the first person hired in the Seattle office. Well, the Seattle office was really close to the founders' homes because they wanted it to be convenient. So because of that, they basically just rented somebody's home and turned it into an office. The problem is they didn't have a lot of money to spend because this was a startup and they were just getting started. And so they, uh, they found this sort of decrepit, run-down, you know, two-story shack, basically. 50% of the building was garage. Just open concrete area. And then the other 50% was one bathroom. <laughs> one bathroom. And then one office area. So it was incredibly small. And we only started with one or two employees, and then that grew to around six or seven employees. And for the first year and a half to two years of the company... It was really small like that. Now, as we started to grow, that office ended up supporting 10, 15, 20, 30 different employees. And that one bathroom was not cutting it, so we had to, we had to switch offices. But in the early days of the company, it was really tiny, and, and we all we, we did okay. 
And we did really nice things like go out to lunch with each other every single day. We would go to Ken's Market and uh, we would go to Red Mill. And uh, there was this Chinese restaurant. I forget what it was called. Great you know, Bamboo, Chinese something. Bamboo Palace. Bamboo Palace. You can probably find all these restaurants on Google Maps. Anyway, um, so we would be working out of this tiny little office and we'd be in the middle of our work day and then all of a sudden we would hear coming above us. And then in the middle of the work day and then we would hear just a whole bunch of shrieking and then this thudding in the ceiling above us every day. It was not a one-time thing. It was every day. Sometime during the day we would hear some tiny creature run around and get in a fight above our heads. And we called the landlord and we said, look, there are either rats or squirrels in our ceiling. This needs to stop. And the landlord, you know, bless them, they didn't speak English very well and they kind of didn't understand what we were saying. And we tried to talk with them and explain the situation and they even heard the noise one time and they just laughed and we're sitting here, we're sitting here going this is not funny these are literal vermin rodents in our ceiling you know we have food in this place and they just wouldn't do anything and so many things happened in that office the toilet went bonkers three or four different times the entire floor flooded at least once and we had all of the wiring to set up the internet between all the computers on the floor it was just, it was a complete mess. That office was a complete mess. I remember we would have these late night wiring sessions where the, th you know, three of us who knew anything about computers, including the founders of the company, would sit in that office, you know, eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night, and we would be networking the computers together to try and get an internet connection and to set up a private network. And, you know, we'd be installing new video cards and whatever else needed to be done to these computers because we did not have a tech department. It was us, that was it. And uh, sometimes we would have to do it in a kind of soggy floor because the, it had flooded and sometimes we would have to do it listening to rats fight above us. It was an interesting office and it was just an interesting area. You know, that's in the heart of hippie, hippieville. Like Greenwood, the Greenwood area, that's where they live. That's where all of the hippies in Seattle live. That and Fremont, those are the two hippie areas of Seattle. And Capitol Hill, Capitol Hill is also very hippie. And the university district where I lived for many years, it's all hippie. But, <laughs> but we would be sitting there in the middle of the office and, you know, we, I, we, I, I, sat, I had this corner window. I sat in the corner and I had a window here and a window there. And I'd be working on whatever I was working on. And then I'd hear off in the distance, ring, 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 ring. And this guy on one of those old time bicycles with the huge front wheel and the itty bitty tiny back wheel would come zipping by and turn the corner and take off his hat and wave. And <laughs> every day this guy rode by to the point where everyone in the company would look at our watches when the time came and like oh here come here comes dapper dan dapper dan's coming on his little two-seater bike and we would all get to the window and wait and sure enough here he comes zip woo he'd take off his hat and wave on his huge front wheel bicycle <laughs> it was it was so so bizarre working in that environment but it was fun we had a lot of good a good fun Good times aside from the rats. Good times aside from the rats. <laughs> Black Tooth says, this is the very reason I love Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd love to visit Texas someday. Penny Farthing, yes. Madman Max, that's exactly what it's called. I, I remember looking it up at the time. I'm like, what kind of bicycle is this? I've seen it in film, but what is it called? It's called a penny farthing. That's the name of the bicycle. Sir Chaos S says, uh, do you miss Oxhorn's short shorts? And uh, are there any thoughts about getting back into it? I do miss Oxhorn's short shorts. Every now and then I'll come up with an idea that I'll want to uh, explore, but uh, I am officially retired from machinima making and I'm... I'm officially retired, not because I don't have a passion for it anymore, but because the raw practicality of adult human life is something that I must address, which includes providing a living for my family and, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. So I've got a full-time job and that preoccupies me almost all of the time, except for an hour or so a day. If that, that I get to play Fallout 4. <laughs> the rest of my time is family and work, family and work. So maybe someday, 
uh, when my um, my time is is divided differently, I could get back into it. Or you know, maybe I become I inherit five million dollars from a long lost duke who lives in Scotland named McGregor. Imagine Justin says, wait, one big wheel bicycle? Is that one of those things where the wheel is really big and there was the teeny tiny wheel in the back with the high seat? Yeah, well, that was the two-seater version. Yes, but that that's, that's a penny farthing. Just Google penny farthing and you'll see a photo of it. Uh, Sir Chaos says, just curious about how you address the creative itch. Neosporin. No, um, <clears throat> uh, I, you know, there, are, I, I am creative in other ways. Like, I am able to do creative things with my work. It's not creative in the same way that I was creative, um, when I was doing Oxhorn stuff, but I get to write my own research papers. I get to come up with my own company strategies. Um, sometimes I get to work with designers to design a website. I do have outlets for my creativity, but it's focused in a completely different direction. Robin says gold bond works better for itching ox. Yes, okay. You get it though, not Neosporin. Gold bond, whatever. Yeah. <sighs> Fact checkers. Robin2258 says, research papers? Like what subject? Well, uh, so I'm in hospitality technology, and so I direct the content that our company publishes. And so I and my employees do a lot of research on hospitality marketing, how to run hotels, hospitality technology, and we have to do a lot of research on all of those different topics, and then we have to regurgitate it in a way that makes sense for small innkeepers, like bed and breakfast owners, hostel owners, um, small independent hoteliers, because that's our target market. They're trying to buy software to run their properties, and we've got the software, but we need to convince them that we're really knowledgeable and that the software we produce can really help with their business. And so we do a lot of research on our own to kind of establish ourselves as thought leaders in the industry. And that's part of what I do uh, in marketing for the company. All right, I just realized that I started to slip into an entirely different Oxhorn world. So let's get back to video games and beer and bacon, because that's why you guys are all here. <laughs> all right, spoken messages. We've got some recordings, ladies and gentlemen. First on the program is Majin Justin. What is on your mind, good sir? Greetings, Alex. I'm Majin Justin here. Bacon. Bacon, bacon, bacon. Bacon, 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 lots of bacon. Let's switch the subject of bacon. Let's talk about it for a second. <laughs> Imagine, Justin, where we talk about bacon every week. I mean, I don't know if there's an avenue of bacon that we have not explored. We just talked about bacon-flavored diet soda. I'm sure there's a bacon-scented perfume or cologne out there. Maybe I'll come out with a line of clothing, or no, a line of derby hats where the inside brim is scented like bacon. So that whenever you take off your hat, a, a whiff of bacon cloud erupts in the room and everyone turns their head and goes, ooh. No. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, it's such a bad idea. All right, Fancy Badger. <laughs> Fancy Badger, you're on the program. What is on your mind, good sir? <laughs> Hello, my friend. I hope you're doing very well tonight, as usual. Doing very well. I had well. a bit of a question for you, but this is about your old machinimas. As we know, some of your old songs, such as Rawful Mao and Under the Torn's Kilt, were inspired by pre-existing songs, but with your own Warcraft spin put on them. 
So those are the two big ones that I think people know. What are some perhaps more uncommon influences that you have? Like, um, I know the anti-elf anthem. I'm not sure if that was inspired by another song, but I'm quite curious. And not only other songs, but just general inspirations that you had for your machinimas. And maybe talk about some inspirations you even had for your fantasy world in the tale of Chloron Hastings. I think that would be cool to hear about. Thank you, my friend, and as always, please stay classy. Fancy Badger, that is a big topic. Uh, it's hard for me to nail everything down, but I have been inspired by quite a lot over the years. Um, gosh, where to begin? In terms of music, the anti-elf anthem is actually completely original. Um, tank, tank, kill, tank is original. Um, a lot of my music is actually completely original. There, there are only a few songs that de were derived from other things. Um, my like the game song. It's a, it's an original song, but I was making fun of contemporary pop at the time, primarily Lady Gaga. And you'll see if you actually watch the music video that I'm mocking or mimicking a lot of scenes from Lady Gaga's own videos. Uh, and the reason for that is because I came back from California after working there for two and a half, three years or so. And uh, this Lady Gaga thing had sort of exploded almost overnight. And I was baffled by it. And I was trying to come to terms with it. I'm like, who is Lady Gaga? Why is everybody just obsessed with Lady Gaga? So I started watching some music videos. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. All right, Alejandro, we can do this with Tarrant and Leather Chaps. Let's just... <laughs> Let's just jump to this. And that was the idea for, like, the game. I'm sitting there watching these these nearly explicit music videos from Lady Gaga, and I'm just thinking, Tarin and Leather Chaps, let's do this thing. <laughs> That's why I made that one. That was my inspiration for that. Uh, tank, Tank, Heal, Tank. I had so much fun with that, and that was just... That was just uh, me wanting to uh, do a cheesy 80s song. I sat down with with Nathan Allen Pernard and I said, look, I want to do a cheesy 80s song, like a montage, like a montage song from, a, from an 80s movie or early 90s. And so we sat down and came up with that together and that was a lot of fun. Um, I'd have to go through all of the different songs. The, the Orcs in Space, like Orcs in Space 2, there are two songs in that movie that are just right out of World War, World War I era popular music. One is... Um, it's a long way to Tipperary, which was a World War One song, military song, and then the next one is from a, uh, a Laurel and Hardy movie called Way Out West. At the ball, that's all. That's right. That's the name of it. And those songs were just completely ripped out of it. My Orcs in Space, Space series was an opportunity for me to just do nothing. Like it was no plot. There were there was no plot. It was just Orcs in Space. I was I was thinking, okay, what? Well, in real life, there's nothing in space. For the majority of space, the vast majority of space is empty. So what do these guys do? And of course, they sing songs about World War One from silent films. Of, of course, that's that's what they do. Anyway, next up is Andy the DK. You're on the program, good sir. What's on your mind? Greetings, Oxhorn. It is I, Andy the DK. How are you doing this fine evening, good sir? Doing Hope your scotch well. and cigar is treating you well. My greetings to everyone in the chat, of course. Ox, it is once again time for the classy question of the week. And my question this week is to you, Ox, you have always been someone who has, you know, always been a big beard supporter. You've had a beard for as long as I can remember. And you've always linked your uh, having a beard to equal having some sort of class uh, but my question is what is the origination of beards and why are they classy because in, back you know all the way in primitive man uh, caveman times talking even earlier before that you know men have always had facial hair but what about what makes having facial hair classy and that is really my question this week Ox so I hope you enjoy this segment, and I hope to hear from you, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you all, and to the DK, signing out. Have a great evening. Great question. So I would, I'll, I'll change the premise a little bit, because I don't believe I've ever said explicitly that beards are classy. I mean, I, I wear a beard, 
you know, I, I enjoy a beard, but I wouldn't say that all beards are classy. But the thing about beards is they convey dignity. And the reason for that is because, um, <clears throat> at least up until recently, many, many boys who were out a wooing would shave their faces to appear more youthful to uh, woo the opposite sex. And the presence of a beard often says, I'm beyond that phase of my life. I have grown up. I am more mature. Uh, wooing the opposite sex is no longer one of my concerns. Now I am about building a legacy for my family and so on and so forth. So on one hand, it kind of pushes past adolescence and youth and embraces adulthood. With the, with the exception of hipster culture, because what hipster culture has tried to do is to co-opt that, right? Uh, to take the beard and 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 f use it in such a way that is in itself immature. But I, I won't get into that right now. I will, however, go back to what you were talking about in terms of cavemen, uh, cavemen and how the beard started. I actually did some research on this when I produced some content for my beard website, growabeardnow.com, and I discovered that beards evolved uh, as part of sexual evolution, right? The reason men and women... I mean, men and women, we're both human, and we both have hair follicles, and so we should both have beards, and some women do have beards, but the majority of women do not have beards, and the reason for that was because of sexual selection. What happened is... Back in the pre-days of history, as humans were still evolving, men who grew beards tended to be seen with greater social standing by other men. And I don't want to get into the dynamics of gender warfare or anything like that. I'm talking about prehistory. This was before religions, before uh, cultures. This was like cavemen don't speak days, right? Your body, the human body is still evolving. And what happened is... Um, men would convey, dig convey dignity upon other men based on their beards. Those men then would have greater social status within the community and thus had a greater chance of reproducing. Because bearded men had a greater chance of reproducing back then, their offspring inherited the bearded gene, right? Conversely, women who did not have beards were celebrated for their femininity and their lack of masculinity, so they tended to be selected as mate partners and because of that, their female offspring tended to inherit genes that did not grow beards. So, over the course of millennia, as we transitioned from um, creatures that were more close to um, to orangutans or apes or, or whatever you want to call them, to actual homo sapiens, uh, the, the sexes started to diverge very visually due to our sexual selection at the time. Um, so... With all of that understood, a bunch of researchers took this data and they did some actual experimentation in New Zealand, I think it was, and then in Laos? I'm not sure where it was, but they, um, they wanted to gauge people's perceptions of bearded men. And here are the results, and I've got this all in my article. The results, so, so on one hand, they interviewed uh, very, you know, Western, middle to upper class people who were college educated, yada, yada, yada. And then they did the exact same experiment with um, more primitive peoples who had no college education and sometimes they couldn't even write and some of them were in poverty or whatever. Very different cultural makeups and backgrounds. And the research discovered that both groups of people, regardless of gender, uh, they found that women were more physically attracted to clean shaven men. But both sexes, both men and women, thought that bearded men uh, had more financial security and greater social authority, which made them more attractive to women for those reasons. Now, of course, this is completely politically incorrect, and this is not going to jive with many people who have got these preconceived ideas about uh, <clears throat> gender dynamics. But this is the data that we uncovered. Uh, that, that I did not, that I discovered. I actually did not participate in the research, so I'm not going to say that I did, but that's just uh, the research that went on. So those are the results. Anyway, didn't want to get too deep into that with you, but th that's the reality. It was really interesting. I found it to be very interesting. <laughs> oh, Mojo Hippie says, I was born in the Middle East and I love a good fuzzy Persian woman. Good on you, my friend. To each their own. We've all got our likes and dislikes.
Ah! Uh, some of some of your comments I can't actually read on air. Um, <clears throat> the Fancy Badger says, Can I send you a ship over Skype? I think I have a good one. Well, I do like smoke ships, but I have nothing to create a smoke ship with today. The, the, the show is almost over, and I don't have a, a cigar, so sadly we're not doing smoke ships today. But please save your ship. If you want to send it to me over Skype just so that you can save it for next week, please do. Please send it to me over Skype. And then we can use it next week. All right. Next on the program is Madman Max. What is on your mind, good sir? Greetings, Oxford. It is I, Madman Max, here once again. Uh, no mythological question or uh, story today. I'm rather under the weather, so. I can't Poor guy. I'm sorry. Think of anything. Uh, except I've got an actual question. Have you sure. been keeping it up with the uh, the Viking show? If so, uh, what do you think of the third season thus far? Or what? If you've even watched it. Firstly, if you've not, I do say watch it. It's rather entertaining. Have a lovely evening and enjoy your lovely scotch. Well, thanks, Madman. Um, I have seen ads and previews for the Viking show, but I haven't seen an episode of it. And uh, the reason is because I don't really watch a lot of television these days. I just don't. <laughs> so uh, it's probably something that would be right up my alley, but I, uh, I don't watch it. But if you recommend it, I will pass the word along to the viewing several. Viewing several, Madman Max likes the Viking show. He recommends it. Gold star for Madman Max. All right, next on the program is Madman Max. We've got another one. What's on your mind? Greetings, Oxford. It is I, Madman Max, or Richard McGough. You've got my name wrong five times now. It's a little bit irritating. You've got McGowan, McGow, McGough, and I don't know what others. So here's just the correction. It is McGough, as in... Um, Cough. Van Gogh, uh, the painter. Anyway, just correcting you on that. Have a lovely evening. Cough, Van Gogh. Okay, I get it. I will remember. McGough. It's not go, it's cough. All right, thank you for the correction. That would frustrate me as well. <laughs> Sorry for my lack of pronunciation. This week in biology, scientists create artificial sperm and use it to fertilize eggs. We're this close to producing our own synths, ladies and gentlemen. And have you played Fallout 4 yet? This time next year, I'm going to fully expect the railroad to start campaigning for synth rights. Synthetic humans. Hey, if you can make artificial sperm and use it to fertilize an egg... Well, <clears throat> we're, 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 we're stepping quickly into Terminator 2 territory, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this week, in space, new research estimates the universe has 700 million trillion exoplanets, with the vast majority being older than Earth. Very fascinating. I wonder what that says about space tourism. Probably nothing, because we'll never actually visit any of these planets. Speed of light restrictions and all of that. This week in neuroscience, Oxford scientists successfully rewrite the memories of mice by using optogenetics. All right, so... Wait a minute here. Every week I read this segment and I get more and more disturbed. So you're telling me that you created artificial sperm and it fertilized an egg and you can successfully rewrite people's memories? Holy cow. We're going to start mass producing human beings and giving them factory made memories. This is a brave new world, ladies and gentlemen. 
Robin2258 says, or Blade Runner territory. Yes, that's probably a better comparison. Blade Runner territory, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Maybe we should stop talking about Sans. Let's talk a little bit more about technology. All right, I'm starting to detect a certain strain of conversation in the chat that's leaning towards social issues, so to speak. Let's just calm down. I, I realize that everyone's being very classy right now, and I appreciate it. But let's change topics. Thank you. Let's talk about other things. Let's talk about bacon. Let's talk about scotch and cigars and beards. And technology. Let's see what's going on in technology. This week in robotics, researchers 3D print the most detailed, dexterous, and highly functional robot hand ever made. All right, so we've gone from synthetic humanoids to actual robotic pieces. Blacktiff says, and Scott Kelly just returned after a year aboard the International Space Station. That's right. They sure did. Or he sure did. And that I'm actually really excited about. I mean, I can't even imagine what it would be like to spend an entire year of your life in space. How amazing would that be? And then it comes splashing down after a year. Now, many of the interviews that I've read have said that there are quite a few um, health issues that they're going to be looking into with him because you're in a, a, a non-gravity environment for a very long time. And your body needs gravity to do many things, like see and pump blood to certain parts of the body. I, I read a, an article that said that Scott Kelly's vision was reduced. It, it It's probably... Uh, degraded by up to 40% during his time in the International Space Station because with no gravity assisting the blood flow, the heart is not pumping as much blood to his eyeballs. So his eyeballs are actually not getting enough blood. Similarly, they said that his heart has probably shrunken by 15% because his heart no longer has to beat as hard to get blood to circulate because there's no gravity pulling on it. So his heart as a muscle has sort of atrophied. So a lot of really crazy things going on with uh, with spending a year in space, but uh, Scott Kelly is a hero for taking on the challenges and, and allowing science to progress so that we can get to Mars someday. So major kudos to him. This week in robotics, Boston Dynamics unveils the next genera uh, generation tether-free version of bipedal humanoid robot Atlas. The name of this robot being Atlas, of course. Boston Dynamics. Did you know that in uh, Fallout 4, sorry to bring everything back to Fallout 4, ladies and gentlemen, but it is the only game I'm playing right now. Um, the Commonwealth Institute of Technology is based off of MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So the, the, bo the big bogeyman of Fallout 4, and this isn't a spoiler, you know this going into the game, the big bogeyman of Fallout 4 is actually based on the company that just released the ability to 3D print an Android hand and Atlas, the latest tether-free bipedal humanoid robot. Hey, what is it they say about art mimicking reality and reality mimicking art? I don't even know. <laughs> This week in material sciences, scientists create superconductive graphene without altering its original state. Superconductive, uh, I'm sure that will have great applications for cell phones. Robin2258 says, like I said, from Blade Runner territory into Ghost in the Shell territory. That's true, Ghost in the Shell does have the, the, uh, the the award for kind of touching on these issues first, doesn't it? How many, how long ago was Ghost in the Shell published? 20 years ago now? They were working on the sentience of um, human-generated creatures back then. 
Black Jeff says, uh, life imitates art, but there is no imitation for bacon. Turkey bacon is not bacon. Fewer words were more truthfully spoken. <laughs> Madman Max says, 2002, I think. No, it can't be. Because I remember... Ghost in the Shell from my own childhood. And uh, I remember watching it like in 1998. Uh, Greg Hartling says, Do my ears deceive me? Did Oxhorn actually reference a manga without ridicule? I never actually read the manga. Or the manga. Sorry, sorry, manga, manga, manga. Sorry. <laughs> I never actually read the manga, <clears throat> but I did watch the video back when I was a kid. Something about bubbly robots. 1995 was the original movie. Okay. Robin2258 says 2004 was the series Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. I've never seen the series. I only saw the movie once when I was a kid. <clears throat> but I remember being blown away by it like, wow, this is pretty... This is pretty hip with the times and the science and the technology. 1995 was the original movie, okay. My beer is out of itself, which means that uh, before we close the show, we must have at least a dash of scotch. Whoop, and there it is. Cheers, ladies and gents. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we had a great show today. I'm going to have to end it. Uh, <clears throat> my babies are probably getting ready for bed here. It's 8 o'clock, 8, 10 my time. And uh, I'm going to get them into their PJs after I take them upstairs and dunk them in the tub. And then I'm going to have a nice relaxing evening without a cigar. Say la vie, such is life. Anyway, uh, no smoke ship tonight. Sorry about that. Uh, wow, everybody's really going on to all of the anime they, they recommend. Okay. All right, I will, I, will, I will let you guys do that. Have at it. Talk all about anime you want. I'm heading out for the night but thank you all so much for coming to this week's episode of scotch and smoke rings you all had wonderful questions you guys managed to keep the topics rolling in so that the show did not get boring we went for an hour and 10 minutes without break well small break to help move furniture into a stranger's van but aside from that quick break we had a, a nice uh, rambunctious evening of conversation so thus ends episode 344 thank you cigar ox uh and hopefully next week we will have cigars in hand so that the show will be longer. Have you noticed that I tend to do a longer show when I have cigars? Yeah. It's because the cigar takes a while to burn when I'm talking so much. And there's no way that I could waste the cigar by not finishing it. The, you know, the the miser in me would never allow me to waste the cigar. So I smoke the whole thing and, and I do the show the whole time. Until the, so key, here's the key. If you really want me to do a long show, get me really large cigars. <laughs> and that will keep me here in front of the camera for a long time. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a fantastic Thursday. Thank you so much for coming. And be sure to tune in next week. Same Ox time, same Ox channel, twitch.tv slash Scotch and Smoke Rings for episode 345. As always, we see here on Scotch and Smoke Rings. Be sure, my friends, that you all stay classy. Cheers. <laughs>